Good afternoon and welcome to uh, Mount Oliver Baptist Church. It's kind of a midweek uh, extension of our sermon from Sunday morning. If you were, if you watched that sermon or you were part of us here in the congregation, you heard me say that there were a few things I'd like to share with you. Some some words of encouragement that we can pull from this passage because everything that God puts in His Word is there to build us up and to encourage us and to instruct us. Uh, so there were a few things that I just did not have time to share, so I said I would come online and I would share those with you. Now just a refresher, if, if you have a moment, I'm going to ask you to do something a little different. Uh, pause this video in just a second and go back, find your Bible, find your Bible app, and read Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25, just as a refresher if you need that. So go ahead and pause right here, and then in a few minutes, a few seconds, I'll come right back. Uh, when you get finished reading, just unpause it and then continue on with the video. Well, welcome back, and I hope you had an opportunity to go back and read Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25. That was a refresher. That was the passage that we focused on. But there were certain things in that passage, in the section of Scripture, that I think we can pull out and we understand that really impressed and got impressed upon my heart are words to encourage us uh, that we really need today, we need in our world today. You know, as, as you watch the news and I watch the news, we could use comfort and encouragement and peace and and all of those things that God has before us. So let's take a look at those just very quickly. I won't take too much of your time today, but if you're reading that story and you're hearing about Zechariah and how he for uh, probably was about 50 years old uh, had the duty of lighting the uh, altar of incense inside the holy place, uh, that the reality of it is is this may be his last opportunity to to do that because the priests could only do it one time in their career. And they had to do it between ages 30 and 50. Uh, and we see that he and his, his wife Elizabeth were both advanced in years uh, because they had not had a son and they were concerned about that. So the two things that Zechariah was most uh, desiring was one, to fulfill his purpose uh, as a priest in the order of Abiyah, and that is to light the altar of incense. And also, he's, he doesn't have a son and he's been praying and desiring a son. And he's been praying for this for a long time. Well, as you read this passage, you see and understand that John is coming, who's going to be here to prepare the way of the Lord. So the first thing I want us to see is very simple. Simply, God has plans for the world. Now, that's encouragement to me right now, because everything that's happening, I think even actually today, uh, right before I begin uh, coming in and recording this, that the Wilson County Mayor, where we're at, has declared a state of emer emergency for our county, and that he has re now required masks all throughout and, and to be worn in, in public places. Well, it's like every day there's something new, there's something coming, and and you may turn on the news, and you may turn on the and watch it or read the papers, and you go, man, I didn't see that coming. Well, isn't it encouraging to you, uh, as it is to myself, that? God is never caught off guard. He's never caught by surprise. God never sits here and says, man, I didn't see that coming. God has a plan for this world, and his plan is going to be fulfilled. He's going to work his plan through humanity, through our culture, through our society, to where his plan will be fulfilled, and it will come to a culmination uh, at the time when Jesus returns and he reigns on this earth. That's his plan. And his plan is to take people with him and to have them be with him in heaven and have eternal life. He has a plan for the world. Uh, he has a plan for you and he has a plan for me. Uh, and that's just encouraging that, that I'm not living this life all by myself. And even though I may not understand what comes next, just to know that I can trust God, that he's watching out for me. The God of the creator of the universe is watching out for you and preparing the path for you, just like he did with the Messiah. Well, I'll give you an idea, just an example of how you some some evidence that God has a plan for the world. If you were just to turn back in the in the new in the Old Testament, just a little ways to the book of Malachi and Malachi chapter three verse one, it says this. Now listen to this. He says, "Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in." A messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. 
So in that passage, now it's separated in my Bible, like from Luke to Malachi, maybe, you know, just maybe not even an inch of space here, separated by an inch of paper, maybe even less than that, about a, a quarter of an inch of paper. But yet it's separated by 400 years in time. So 400 years earlier, God through, the, through Malachi said, Behold, I send my messenger. My messenger's coming, and he's going to prepare the way before the Lord. Man, 400 years before the, the, the forerunner came, God said, I have a plan. And here is the plan. And he laid out what his plan would be for John the Baptist, for Zechariah to be visited by the angel Gabriel at the right time. The, the exact timing necessary for John the Baptist to, to go before the Messiah and prepare the way of the Lord. So just to know that God has a plan. He has a plan for the world. Also, the second one is God has a purpose for every person. Every person in our story, Zechariah, Elizabeth, John, every one of them have a purpose. Zechariah had a purpose in life, and that was to go light the candle, light the incense on the altar of incense. Go light that. And his purpose in life was to do that. And God held it out in such a time to where when he went in, the, then Gabriel would be there. Gabriel had a purpose, purpose to announce the arrival of John. Elizabeth had a purpose to bear a son and to bring him in, even though she's advanced in years, even though Zechariah really doubted it was going to take place because that's where Gabriel took his voice for nine months until John was born. So you see, there was a purpose, and John comes with a purpose. He comes with the purpose of, of being the forerunner. We see that. What is John's purpose? In Luke chapter 1, verse 17, I'll just remind you, it says, and he will go. This is Gabriel speaking to Zechariah about his son who is not yet born. And he says, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Gabriel outlined John's purpose in life was right there. John has a purpose. Zechariah has a purpose. Elizabeth had a purpose. You know what? God's got a purpose for you. And I encourage us all to seek what God's purpose is. I believe that I have found uh, at least the purpose in my life right now is to be the pastor of this church. I don't know what God's next plan is for my life. I don't know. It, it may not. It, this may be it. This may be my purpose for the rest of my life. And that's fine as long as I'm fulfilling God's purpose for my life. That's my desire. And I hope that's your desire too. And just to know that he has a purpose for you. So God has a purpose for every person. God has a plan for the entire world. Now in this, you can the whole story is all about the parents. It's about Zechariah and Elizabeth. And, and, and if you're a parent, these words can be very encouraging to you. God prepares parents to fulfill his purpose. God prepared Zechariah ahead of time. God had a plan and prepared Zechariah to be a priest. He prepared the time for him to be in the holy place. He prepared him with the news that you will have a son. I've heard your prayers. I will, you will have a son. And he's preparing him. He prepared him by saying, here is who your son is going to be. Here is what he's going to do in the world. He prepared him. He prepared him all along the way. So as a parent, I, I'm encouraged to know that God prepares me for the times that are difficulty, that are times are difficult. He prepares me on how to parent, the words to say. If we just trust him, he's preparing our hearts and prepare, preparing our path to be the parents that he wants us to be. Now, the fourth thing here, so we have God has a plan for the world. God has a purpose for everyone. God prepares parents. Now, also, God makes promises. God makes promises. I just told you about the promise in Malachi chapter 3. I told you that passage. But if we continue on in Malachi chapter 4, it says this. <clears throat> Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Now, hear that. 
It didn't say, I may send, or you might see this in the future. He says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the father to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. See, God's making promises. He... His scripture is full of promises. He promises to love you. He promises to protect you, to provide for you, to be your God. If you'll just trust him and be wholeheartedly devoted to him like Zechariah and Elizabeth were, walk blamelessly in righteousness. In other words, be obedient to him. Be obedient to his word. But he also makes promises and he says, this is what I'm going to do. Now, here's a promise for you. He says, if you will trust Jesus, if you'll put your faith in Jesus Christ, I promise you, you will have eternal life in heaven. There's a promise you can hold on to. He says, if you will humble yourself before me, I will heal your land. These are promises of God. And the scripture is full of promises, completely full of promises. Well, so I take, I t I'm encouraged that God makes promises, but you know what? I'm more encouraged by this next one. How good is a promise if, one, you don't remember making it, and two, you don't fulfill it, you don't come through? Now, each of us have made promises to someone in our life and, have, and failed to uh, meet their expectations or failed to come through with those promises. God's not like that. God doesn't make a promise that he knows. Uh, he know when God makes a promise, he knows he's going to fulfill it. That's just who God is. God makes promises, and he keeps his promises. So there's the, there's the fifth one there. God makes promises and keeps his promises. Now, remember I read that passage in Malachi chapter 4, and it said certain words. It said in there like uh, that he'll, he'll turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Well, I want you to read Luke 16 and 17 again. He says this, specifically in verse 17. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah. He just said that in Malachi 400 years earlier. He said, I'll send someone. I will send Elijah. And he says, John will come in the spirit and power of Elijah. What? To turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. That's word for word what he said in Malachi. Malachi chapter 4. See, I have a typical, difficult time remembering what I said yesterday many times. I don't know about you. We probably all have that 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 period. We 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 have a hard time remembering what we said. God remembers everything He says, and He fulfills the promises that He that He makes. He knew not just, "Hey, I'm going to fulfill this promise." He says, "Here is the words I said 400 years earlier. Here's the exact words again. This is what I said was going to happen. This is what is about to happen with your son John Zechariah." An amazing thing that he was going to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. And in Malachi, he said, I'm going to send you Elijah. He says, they're going to turn their hearts of children toward the children to, toward their fathers and their fathers toward their children. He says that right there in Luke chapter 1 again. This is what John's going to do. He's going to, in, in Malachi, he said, he's going to prepare the way, of, the way for the Lord. And in Luke chapter 16 and 17, he says, he will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. God makes promises and he keeps them. So, if God promises you eternal life, you're going to get receive eternal life. If God promises to love you unconditionally, he's going to love you unconditionally. There's no hidden agendas with God. He makes a promise, he remembers that promise, and he keeps that promise. So isn't that just encouraging today? God's going to watch over us. He promises so many things in our life. He promises us. And the last thing I just want to bring to our attention is this. It kind of goes without saying in here because we talked a little bit about it several times, Sunday and today. But probably one of the most encouraging things that we hear in this is God answers prayers. Zechariah had two prayers. Zechariah wanted to, to fulfill his purpose as the priest in his order. He wanted to be able to go into the Holy of Holies and fulfill his purpose of lighting the incense. That's everything he's been training for. Since he was a teenager, he had that desire in his prayer. And throughout the years, as the lot was cast and he wasn't chosen, he prayed more and he waited and he prayed and he waited and he prayed really for about 20 years from his eligibility till finally right there at the end, God, his, his lot has been chosen and he goes in at the time in which Gabriel is right there with him and announces his son, John. The second prayer he had was, can I have a son? I pray for a son. 
So see, God answers prayers. I mentioned in Sunday morning, but I want to remind us, God, Zechariah's name means God remembers. When God remembers, it means his attention is turned towards you. It means that he, he, his, his, his attention was turned toward Zechariah. He heard his prayers. He understood his desires. God remembers. God remembers you. God remembers your desires. God knows your prayers. So throughout this passage, there are so many things of God encouraging us. So when we read this passage, and many times like we skip over it around Christmas time, but it's more than just a man going into the temple and becoming mute and can't speak. It's about God's plan and how God himself, he's, God's the subject of this story or the object of this story. It's all about God. It's not about Zechariah and it's not about John. It's about what God's doing. God's planning for the world. God has a purpose for everyone. God answers prayers. He keeps, makes promises and he keeps promises. And he prepares parents to, be, to uh, train their children. Man, there's so many things in this passage. I hope you've incur been encouraged by these today. I hope that you've gleaned the information from it that God would have us understand. So God bless you. Thank you for being with us. And I look forward to seeing you again Sunday at 10 o'clock as we continue on with our Forerunner series, uh, Forerunner uh, Part 3. And it talk, when we talk Sunday, it's going to be about the power that we have with words. Words have power. I look forward to seeing you then. God bless you. Let me pray. Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for your words that you've given us, such words of encouragement to know that you, uh, just to reemphasize in our, in our minds and our heart, that you have a plan for the world. None of this catches you by surprise. You have a purpose for each one of us. Uh, Father, that you prepare us. You prepared, you've prepared a path for us. And to know that you answer our prayers and you hear our concerns. Father, that is a God that loves us, and we thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to prepare our way uh, to heaven. And Father, I just pray that you'll keep everyone listening here. Keep them, keep them safe over the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you guys Sunday, 10 o'clock, as I always have been saying. Just stay strong and stay healthy. God bless you.